Have you heard of the steam juicer? This is a fantastic tool that allows you to make use of backyard or foraged fruit that might otherwise drop from the trees or bushes and go to waste. So I'm talking about plums, crab apples, grapes, pears, peaches, and elderberries. So today we're going to take a big batch of elderberries and use the steam juicer to extract the juice. The juice can then be turned into elderberry jelly or elderberry syrup. And I have some great time-saving tips that are going to save you so much effort. My name's Michelle and I'm here to help you create your slice of country living wherever you live. Welcome to Chocolate Box Cottage, the sweet spot between old fashioned skills and modern convenience. Today we're taking this fantastic tool, can you tell I love it, the steam juicer to extract the juice from a big batch of elderberries, much bigger than this little basket here. It saves so much time and I think you're really going to like it and you should probably seriously consider adding one of these to your preservation kitchen. I thought first off we should talk about the components of the steam juicer so you understand how they all work together. And as always you can check the timestamps below to skip ahead to the part of the video that is going to be most helpful to you. But it is helpful to understand how this all fits together. So the steam juicer, I've had this one since 2009. My husband gave it to me for my birthday. I asked for it. I am a big fan of practical gifts that save time and make everyday tasks more enjoyable. So I was thrilled to get it. It's, this one is made of stainless steel. It is a back to basics brand. I would recommend looking for one made of stainless steel. I've seen them made out of aluminum and I don't feel comfortable juicing acidic fruit into an aluminum vessel. So let's take this apart and see what we've got here. This bottom piece is the water pan. This is where the water goes that will create the steam to juice the fruit. The next piece that stacks on top of that is the juice kettle. And you'll see this has a cone in the center with a large opening and this permits the steam to flow through the center and rise up to the fruit. You'll also see a piece of metal tubing inside and a spigot and tubing out here, which is where the juice will dispense from. So that goes next. Then there is the colander or food basket. It is perforated all over the bottom as well as on the sides and it has a very generous capacity. You could easily fit two gallons of fruit in here. And you set this in here filled with fruit and then on top of that, goes the lid. So the way this works is a couple inches of water are added to the water pan on the bottom. You heat it on the stove, it creates steam that rises up through the middle chamber here, the juice kettle, and it reaches the fruit in the colander on top. And the steam softens the fruit and causes the juice to be released to flow into the juice kettle and then down into the tubing. And we use the tubing to dispense into another container. And I'll show you exactly how all this works together. I just really think this is a great invention. I've gotten so much use out of mine over the last more than 10 years now. And I can't even tell you how much time it has saved and how much food it allowed us to utilize that otherwise I wouldn't have a way of using. We're juicing elderberries today and I promised you some time-saving tips, so let's get right into that. If you've ever worked with fresh elderberries, you know that one of the biggest drawbacks, if not the biggest, is all the time it takes to remove each tiny little berry from its tiny little stem. It's incredibly time-consuming. Well, there is a wonderful shortcut to this. Simply take these clusters of berries, spread them out on cookie sheets, and put them in the freezer until they freeze solid. I have put a few trays in the freezer and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. And before I head to the freezer, I'm going to add water to the water pan and put this on the stove so it can start heating. Okay, the water pan is 
heating behind me on the stove. I filled it three fourths full of water and put the juice kettle and the lid on top of it. So it is heating up and getting ready for us. If you have hard water, you'll want to add a tablespoon of plain white distilled vinegar to that water pan on the bottom. This will keep it clear and easy to clean. I've got the colander right here. I'm just gonna set this in my sink and pull on a pair of clean kitchen gloves. Are gloves essential? No, you can skip them if you like. The reason that I use them is that, <laughs> is that the warmth from your hands will soften and melt those little tiny berries rather quickly. And so by wearing a pair of clean gloves, I'm able to process through the berries very rapidly without making a big squishy mess. Have your work area set up, mise en place, and ready to go before you get the berries from the freezer. You wanna have everything ready so you can just quickly process through them before they start to melt. Okay, I've got my tray of frozen elderberries here. I want you to watch and see how quickly this goes. Simply pick up a cluster of berries, take it over to your colander, and just rub the stems quickly between your hands. Let's do another. All those little berries just fall right off their stems into the colander and we can just start, discard the stems to another bowl. This is such a great time saver. In a matter of two or three minutes, you can de-stem an entire tray of elderberries. And you might have noticed that the elderberries that I'm working with are blue. That's because here in the Pacific Northwest, we have a different species of elderberries called cerealia. And that means the color of the sky on a clear day. And that is exactly the color that these are. They are just a beautiful, beautiful blue. There's a lot of concern about the toxicity of elderberry stems. Doing it this way, you're going to have very minimal stem material falling in with the berries, and they're going to be cooked, steamed, in the steam juicer, so you have nothing to worry about. Look at that, our first tray of elderberries is all de-stemmed. I think I might have exaggerated on the time when I said two or three minutes. I really think this took less than a minute to completely de-stem an entire tray of elderberries. The water in the lower chamber of the steam juicer came to a vigorous boil. I reduced the heat to medium and I'll continue to keep an eye on it. I do want it to maintain a steady boil so we get, have lots of steam, but you don't want to let the reservoir in the bottom boil dry. So remove the lid, being careful of escaping steam. Make sure you open it away from your face and then set the basket of fruit right in there on top. Put the lid on and we'll let the steam do its work. It's going to rise up through that cone in the center of the basket and release the steam all through the berries, causing them to basically to melt. Since we've pre-frozen the elderberries, they're going to soften much easier. And meanwhile, I'm going to go de-stem the other two trays of elderberries and get them in the pot as well. For these next trays of berries, since the colander is already in use on the stove, I just set a bowl in the sink and again, working very quickly, processing through all these elderberries. Now what we're doing today is we are making elderberry juice with the steam juicer and it is your choice what you want to do with that juice. You can make it into your own home remedy of elderberry syrup or you can make it into delicious, delicious elderberry jelly. You can find a printable version of these directions at my website, chocolateboxcottage.tv, and I'll put a link for that in the description box below. But you can see how quickly this happens. They literally fall off of the stems, and the little bits of stems that do end up in here you don't even need to worry about. Can you imagine how much time it would take to pick all those tiny little berries off one by one? Aren't these beautiful? And then whatever else has fallen off onto the tray, just 
pour it right into the bowl. And let's add this to our colander. I'm going to add this to the pot. And then I'm going to take a spoon and get in here and stir. I'm going to try to distribute the berries so that they cook more evenly or heat more evenly and start giving us juice sooner. That looks good. Now I'm going to add the lid and let the pot do its job. But before you turn your attention elsewhere, you need to prepare a receptacle, a container to receive the juice. So water flows downhill. Your container needs to be placed at a slope downhill so that the juice will flow freely. I have a baker's bench right here uh, that I use for baking bread and making some of my other German and Norwegian heritage dishes. It works perfect for setting the container. You could use a bar stool or a chair. A two quart container like this measuring bowl is really ideal. Not only does it hold quite a bit of juice, but it's got a pour spout, which makes it really easy to use to, use to pour the juice into other containers. There are a few things to keep in mind when using a steamer juicer. It is a labor saving device, but it's not fast. If you think of it similar to the way a crock pot works, it makes it easier to understand. So alternatively to using the steam juicer, we could heat all the berries in a large pot and crush them with a wooden spoon or mash them and grind them with a potato masher. We could put them through a fruit press or a grinder or cook the berries and squeeze them through a jelly bag. Those are all fairly hands-on way of producing juice. The way this works is we load the fruit into the steam juicer and then we let the steam do the work. So it's going to take time. It takes between an hour to an hour and a half before the juice starts flowing through the tubing and you can dispense it into a container. But that hour to an hour and a half gives you time to do something else. You can work on another preserving project, you can clean the kitchen, you can go read a book. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that that's how that works. You don't have to hover over it while it's working. You've added enough water to the reservoir. If you are ever concerned about it, you can lift up the bottom, take a peek, and make sure there's still water in there. I like to keep a tea kettle on the stove with water, but honestly, I've never needed it. I use that for canning, and so I always have it here. But if you've added three-fourths way full of water in that water pan in the bottom, you've got more than enough water to do a batch of fruit from start to finish. Another efficiency note is you should be able to easily get two batches, two loads of fruit through the steam juicer in a day without stressing yourself out or tiring yourself out. It can just happen in the background while you're doing other things around the house, around the kitchen, in the garden. Um, and of course, it's useful for more than just elderberries. There's a long list of fruits that you can use this on. All your cherries and berries, if you've got bags and bags of them built up in your freezer, this is a great way to get them out of the freezer and in a usable form. You can do apricots, peaches, pears, apples, and crab apples. You can do pineapple. Um, the list in the little instruction booklet is long. Plums. Plums are a favorite around here because we've got lots of plum trees. Rhubarb and even tomatoes. You can make tomato juice with your steam juicer. This is just a fantastic tool. I can't say enough good about it. I've had mine for more than 10 years and have used it heavily. And once the juice has been dispensed, you can put it in canning jars and can it. You can freeze it. You can make other recipes, jellies and syrups and such with it. It's really up to you. This just opens a whole lot of possibilities for using fruit that you might not otherwise have an easy way to take advantage of. Well, as you can see, the juice has started flowing through the tube and filled it up. It's just waiting here for us. And you'll also notice I put the rubber gloves back on. The juice and the tubing are very hot. You never want to touch this with bare hands. And you want to be very cautious about where you direct the tubing so that it goes into your container only. So hold the tubing with one hand, pinched shut, 
Then carefully release the clamp and set it aside. Then carefully unfold the tubing and set it in the container. And just look at that juice coming out. Pure elderberry juice. And of course you don't want to walk away. You want to keep a close eye on it. Make sure that the tube stays in your bowl. And just marvel that you got all this juice for so little effort. Okay, we're reaching the top. So I'm gonna pick it up with one hand, fold it in half, and then I am going to put the clamp back on. It's a little tricky to do with rubber gloves, but it's the only way to be safe. So I'm gonna open it, clamp it down there, and we've got a full container of pure elderberry juice. And of course, you've already decided what you wanna do with, with your juice. Uh, I am going to can my pure elderberry juice to make jelly and syrup later when I have time and the kitchen's not so busy during harvest season. Now there's a special consideration with elderberries. Uh, some elderberry varieties in the US are not considered acidic enough to water bath can. I have a pH meter and I have checked our elderberry juice from elderberries in our area and they always fall well below the threshold level. And so I know they are safe to can. Um, if you are in doubt, you could freeze it or get yourself a pH meter and check it and then adjust the pH with lemon juice so that you can can it if that is what you wish to do. I always start by ladling some juice into a jar first so that my container is not quite so full when I'm ready to pour because this is very hot juice. And you notice I'm still wearing my gloves because this container again is hot. Second jar almost full and you'll notice that we have more juice waiting already. I'll probably give it a little bit more time so that we get a larger quantity when I go to dispense it. A quarter inch is the recommended head space for juices and I am going to use my steam canner. That looks good. Let's come in and draw off some more juice. Carefully remove the clamp and then carefully and slowly unfold. There we go. Okay, you can see bubbles traveling down the tubing. That means we're just about at the end there, but it's enough to fill another jar. So we'll clamp it off and get busy. Would you like to see what's happening inside the pot? Let's take a peek. So if you can see in here, the berries have turned very dark, dark purple. And according to the instruction booklet, if you just leave the berries without stirring, you'll get a clear juice. If you stir the berries or whatever type of fruit you're processing, if you stir while it's heating, then you're gonna release some, some cloudiness, some sediment into your juice. Now I am just making elderberry juice for jelly and for syrup and I don't care so I'm going to go ahead and stir that up but if you were after a prize at say the county fair you would refrain from stirring so that you could have crystal clear juice for your prize winning jelly. It's become very soft and smooth the berries are just melting away and different types of fruit take different lengths of time uh, the one that takes the longest is apples. They're a real firm flesh and those 
the cell structure just doesn't want to release the juice as easily, so it's going to take longer to juice. These elderberries were pretty quick. And we'll give it a little bit more time. There's still more juice flowing through. Yes, I can see there's still some more juice in the juice kettle chamber here. And so I'm gonna probably give it another 15 minutes and then we'll call it good. Get our last bit of juice. And see how much we end up with. Looks like it's already ending. You get that last little bit of juice. You have to very carefully remove it from the steam and then pour it out. And that should be enough to fill this third quart jar. It's not perfect, but we're gonna call it close enough. Well, I've already added the first two jars to the steam canner. This is a Fruit Saver brand steam canner, another pretty nice tool to have in the kitchen. And it can be used as an alternative to a water bath canner. There is a dial in the knob that shows the temperature so you can get the correct temperature for your elevation. And so I've got the two jars in here from earlier. I'm gonna add the third one and the water below the tray is is at a simmer. So it's been keeping those two jars hot, but it's not quite at a boil yet. Most juices process for 10 to 15 minutes, pints or quarts. You could treat elderberry juice like tomato juice, which is a more borderline pH product. And at my elevation, which is 2,500 feet, that is 45 minutes. Now the steam canner is approved for processing up to 45 minutes long. And the reason for that cutoff is you don't wanna run out of steam in the bottom of the pan and you can't open it to add steam at any time. So we are falling within the safe guideline. My elderberry juice is acidic enough and I'm just gonna go ahead and process it for the time that is required for tomatoes and we'll be good. See now that wasn't hard at all, was it? Three quarts of beautiful pure juice from three cookie sheets full of fruit. So there you have a guideline for you. A cookie sheet full of fruit about will yield about a quart of juice and of course, Fruit that is less juicy may be a little bit less, but those quarts of juice can be turned into other products later. When your kitchen is not quite so busy and you're through the mad dash of harvest season, you can make elderberry syrup, elderberry jelly, or whatever fruit you're working with, whether that's peaches, cherries, apricots, whatever. You can have that convenient step of you've already got the juice prepared and then it's just that much easier to take it to the next step for your final preserve. Well, thank you for joining me today at Chocolate Box Cottage. This was a lot of fun. I hope that this tutorial on the steam juicer was really helpful to you. And if you have any further questions, leave them in the comments. Bye-bye. You're still here, how wonderful. I have two more pieces of wisdom that I would love to share with you. One is what to do with the leftover fruit pulp, and the other is how to clean and maintain your steam juicer. So for your leftover fruit pulp, there are a couple of really awesome things you can do with it. One is to make fruit butter. So let's say for example you juiced apples. You can take the apple pulp and put it in a pan on the stove or in your crock pot. You'll have to add some juice back to it to bring back some of that flavor and sweetness that was carried away in the juice and you can cook that down and make wonderful apple butter. I have a recipe for that and I will put the link below for you. The other great option is to make fruit leather. And I have a full tutorial on the best fruit leather method that I will leave below for you as well. But I'm not gonna do either of those today. My chickens love the leftover elderberry pulp, so I'm gonna give it to them. Here, girls. Well, I think they're enjoying it. Now let's go inside and clean the steam juicer. So you can just wash the food basket like any other dish in your sink with warm soapy water. The juice kettle, you'll want to rinse it out and then unclamp the tubing and let the water flow through it to get it nice and clean. And the pan on the bottom if you forgot to put a little vinegar in the bottom, 
You may notice a white film. That is really easy to fix. Just add a little white vinegar and use a nice um, scrub pad that won't scratch and it comes right off. Finish by polishing it with a soft, clean towel and it will keep its sparkling good looks for years to come. If you ever see any type of residue or discoloration on the outside, you can use a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend on a damp, soft cloth. Rub gently in the direction of the metal and that will keep it shiny and prevent scratches. Don't use anything abrasive on your stainless steel steam juicer. When you store it, leave the clamp off the hose and it will be ready for you the next time you need it.